Hey sewing friends and welcome to another episode of Pinspiration Sewing. On my last episode I recreated a mesh oversized bead style top very popular here in the Caribbean and this time I am recreating Victoria's Secret Christmas PJs. Stay tuned! If you watched my last video, I introduced the Love Notions Breckenridge Henley to you guys. It's a new pattern and it is still on sale. Right now, actually, this is your last chance. The sale ends tomorrow, Monday, October the 26th. In that video, I showed you guys my dress version of the Breckenridge Henley. I received so much love, both on Instagram and here in Facebook groups where I posted those pictures. I got so much love, especially on color of the dress. So I mentioned in that video, and I did give you a sneak peek of this fabric, that I was going to recreate the Victoria's Secret pajamas. So I actually found that inspiration photo when I was scrolling, looking for inspiration for my initial Breckenridge Henley dress. I found this photo of the Victoria's Secret pink um, PJ top in the Buffalo check, and I could not believe I had the exact fabric in my fabric stash and the reason why i say exact is because as you can see i have solid red and this is not a separate fabric this is actually just the wrong side of this fabric in my inspiration photo they use this same red as the cuffs and also the neckband placket situation so i was able to recreate it almost exact using just this one fabric that i had in my stash i had one and a half yards of this fabric and it was actually flawed I will try to insert a photo of what the flaws looked like but essentially this is a print and the black ink like was really messy at one point all the way across from selvage to selvage. Luckily because I shortened my top I was able to leave that mess right at the bottom of the hem so then it would have actually been folded under anyway and then i actually decided to shorten the top another inch anyway after trying it on so then all of that got cut away and i have no flaws on this top at all which means if i wanted to wear it out in public i totally could but <laughs> i made this for the purpose of pjs hubby says it looks too good to be pjs but i wanted it to be my christmas pjs so if you're not familiar with the Breckenridge Henley, I'm just going to go over the features of the pattern. So it offers sizes extra small to 5X. I am usually a large. I made a straight large in this top. There are three body views. We have the shirt, which is the one I'm wearing right now. We have the dress, which I made in my previous video. And then there's also the tunic version. And for sleeves, we have three sleeve options as well. So you have short sleeve. You have this long sleeve with a cuff and then the sleeves which I made on my dress version are three quarter sleeves that are rolled up with a button tab and I absolutely love those sleeves. Those are my favorite sleeves of all time. So there are a few things I changed in relation to the inspiration photo and there are also a few adjustments I made to the pattern. So let's go through the changes I made to the inspiration photo first. So in the inspiration photo, one of the things you will notice is that the way the placket is done, it is done like dead center of um, two sets of checks. I didn't want that because I could not bring myself to have in the center of two checks the placket and then this set of checks over here is black and then this set over here may be red because they're alternating um, colors. Um, I kind of like symmetry so I put my placket in <laughs> the center of a line of checks. So I have my placket on the center of the red checks so then on both sides of the placket you have the black checks and i'll come up closer so you can see what i mean so i hope you can see the way my placket is done i have it down the center of this red line and then on each side we have the black checks so that is the first change i made and then the second change i made is with the buttons um they used white buttons on theirs and that is fine because they have the, the dog for the pink logo in white on the chest so it kind of goes together but i felt like if i use if i use white there is nothing else to bring in the white 
so I prefer to use black and I also really love the buttons on the Breckenridge Henley the way that you have some extra ones coming up of course this is optional but I really like that style so I think they only had was it three or four buttons on the inspiration photo I can't remember you guys will be seeing it right now but I have six buttons on mine so I have four that are holding the placket together and then I have the two separate ones that are just there for style essentially and remember with this pattern you don't need any button holes so all of these buttons are just hand stitched on and they hold the placket down the neckline is big enough for you to just put it over your head and remember this is made with knit fabrics so it really does just stretch over your head easily now in terms of alterations I made to the pattern um, I kind of learned from my dress so what I needed to do for the top version. The first thing is that I found the grading unnecessary. I had graded from large to extra large at the hips for the dress. And then right at the last minute before the photo shoot, I ended up taking in the hip of the dress slightly. So for the top, I just went with a straight size large. The next thing was that I needed to shorten the sleeves by one and a half inches. But because of the way the cuffs are on the inspiration picture, they're a little bit shorter. This is actually supposed to be quite a long cuff. I actually decided to shorten the cuff instead. So I shortened my cuff by one and a half inches instead of the sleeve, just so I have a shorter cuff so it looks more like the inspiration picture. Then from the dress version, I noticed that I needed to do a pretty big sway back adjustment. So on the top version, I did a one inch sway back adjustment and that works out perfectly. It's definitely a change I will need to make going forward to all of my Breckenridge Henleys. And this is a pretty standard change for me. I often have to do a sway back adjustment anyways. I actually should have done it on the dress and I knew that I should have done it on the dress, but because of time, I omitted it. But for the top version, I made sure to get it right this time. And then the other changes I made were length changes. So I had shot on the top, one inch on the pattern paper. And then after trying it on, just before hemming, I cut another inch off the hem. So in total, I shot on the pattern two inches, short people problems. You all know this by now. I do have some footage from the <laughs> sewing room when I was making this top. I think I have footage of changing the cuff and also I did give you a little snippet of how I pattern matched my top so if you look at the side here my side seam is pattern matched on both sides i didn't bother to pattern match the sleeve at the arm side but i did make sure that both sleeves match each other so both sleeves are the same for my top stitching i used my blind hem foot that came with my sewing machine i used it as an edge stitch foot i learned that from kittenish behavior right here on youtube um, so that is a trick I use all the time when I'm doing top stitching. It kind of just runs along the edge just like your edge stitch foot would. Um, let me see if I can show you what that foot looks like. So this is what the blind stitch foot looks like. And this piece right here, this runs along the edge of the fabric. And then the top stitch would happen on the inside. And of course you can adjust according to how you need it. And this is another foot that really helped me with my Breckenridge Henleys. This is a knit foot and I actually got it in a set of, I think it's 32 feet. And I will have a separate video on that demonstrating some of the feet. This one has been an absolute lifesaver. This works way better than the walking foot in my opinion. And then for hemming, this is the twin needle that I used. Well, I'm going to cut to that footage now so you can see what I was getting up to <laughs> in the sewing room while I was working on this top. So I'm shortening my cuff by one and a half inches. I've already done that. And I've decided I'm going to just cut this on the fold. So I drew my center line. I'm going to trim here. And then say the fold of the fabric is coming down this way. Then you place this line on the fold and cut. That way I don't have to shorten this side as well. I'm just gonna trim that off. So I wanted to show you guys how I'm gonna match the buffalo plaid. This is actually the back piece. What I did was lay down my front piece and match these so that the side seams will match. So that's taken care of. But now because the fabric is solid, 
it makes it a little bit more difficult to then flip this over on the wrong side and then match so what i'm doing is i am just running a basting stitch with a hand needle down the center in a bright color so that when i flip this over like so i can then see where the center is and then once this is laid down like this i'm gonna have to lift this up and try to match up those plaids <laughs> those checks so it's gonna take a little minute i am finished the front already so i'm just gonna do the back now and then everything else hopefully should be easier i think the only other thing i'll have to try to match is the sleeves and i have no intention of trying to match the plaid at the arm side i just want the two sleeves to look the same so that should be pretty easy so this is what i mean so now we have that yellow thread right on the fold so we know that that is where the center is and now i can go ahead and match the checks along the side seams because both fronts have the same side seam and we want that to match with the back so both sides of the back and both sides of the front should have the same layout i absolutely love the way this top came out and i don't even think i need to say this i need bottoms now <laughs> But I don't have any more of this fabric and the store where I purchased this from does not have any more of this fabric either. So I'm kind of on the hunt online for some of this fabric. It's a cotton spandex. So if you run across any Buffalo Check cotton spandex link, me up, please. Thank you very much. I found some on Girl Charlie, but I feel like if the design is slightly different, print actually, print is slightly different but if i can't find anything else i'm just gonna get that one or i may just end up doing plain red or plain black bottoms but either way i need to get the bottom sewn up before christmas time because i want this to be my christmas pjs i want to wake up on christmas day wearing <laughs> this set for my pictures this time i actually just shot in my living room because i mean it's pjs i'm not gonna go outside to shoot pjs pjs are meant for inside the house <laughs> So I just shot the pictures on my couch in my living room. So I'm gonna insert those photos now. So I hope this gives you an idea of how versatile the Breckenridge Henley pattern is because my dress version was pretty dressy i mean i styled it casually but you could totally dress it up and then we have the complete opposite with pj so it's a very versatile pattern and it's a pattern that can take you through all the seasons with the different sleeve options and so forth just because of how simple it is to apply this placket and the buttons i'm not sure i will ever try another henley pattern ever i think this is it for me <laughs> the breckenridge is my new go to handle pattern that being said if you have not grabbed it yet remember it's on sale for three dollars off ending tomorrow so now is your chance as usual i will have my affiliate link down below if you want to purchase the pattern through me i would really appreciate that i will earn a very small commission at no extra cost to you so that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed my second episode of pinspiration sewing I am definitely enjoying this series. I've only done two so far and I can tell that this is something I'm gonna keep doing because it's just so much fun and two so far and I can tell that this is something I'm gonna keep doing because it's just so much fun to recreate things you probably thought you would never own. 30 times you scroll Pinterest, you scroll Instagram, other fashion websites and so forth and we see things and we're like, oh, that looks cute and then we kind of just skim past it but no i kind of i'm kind of looking at them with a different eye every time i see something i like i'm like hmm which patterns can i use to remake that i actually had a different one planned for this month but then i ended up seeing this and i thought the timing was perfect as we're getting ready for the holiday season because the other one was a dress that i was gonna use the pattern scout fun um top pattern for I was going to recreate a striped black and white dress 
but I feel like if it's kind of a summer dress, I don't know if I may actually put that off till next year or uh, if I can't come up with an idea for the next episode, then I may still do that one because forever summer over here. I'm kind of addicted to Pinterest lately and I keep saving things and wanting to recreate things. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have so many ideas that I have to struggle to pick one for next month. So I have a feeling that that fern top is going to move into next year, either spring or summer, but we'll see anyway. I'm totally rambling now, so sorry. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Also click the subscribe button on your way out if you haven't done so already. Remember to follow me on Instagram at Island Socialist and also subscribe to my website www.islandsocialist.com and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye!